Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Today's Everything Music is going to be part two of how to use modulations. So we're going to pick it up at number six, which is a diminished seventh to dominant seventh modulation. This is actually kind of a simple one. If you take any diminished seventh chord and lower the root of it down a half step, it becomes a dominant seventh. Okay, so we're going to use that in order to modulate from the key of C minor to the key of E flat major here. So I'm gonna show you this. You get C minor, F minor is a four chord. You have C minor back to the one chord. You have a B diminished seven is the seven chord. This is our transition chord. This is where the modulation happens. Now let's take a look at how this chord's spelled. B, D, F, A flat. That equals B diminished seven. If I lower this note down a half step to B flat, I have B flat, D, F, A flat. Well, we know that that is a B flat seven chord, which happens to be right here, B flat seven, the five chord in, you got it, E flat major. So this is our transition chord and that resolves to the one chord of E flat major. Any diminished seventh chord could be in any inversion. If you drop the bass note down a half step, it becomes a dominant seventh. I can take any inversion of this uh, B diminished seven I can take D, F, A flat, C flat, because C flat's not the other name for B, drop this down a half step to D flat, and then I have D flat, F, A flat, C flat, which is, of course, a D flat seven chord. So that would work for any diminished seventh chord, and then that becomes the five chord in the new key. So this is a very simple type of modulation, and it sounds like this. It's a very simple modulation. I'm taking this B diminished seventh chord, lowering the root down, and it becomes a B flat dominant seventh chord. So what was once the seven chord in C minor becomes the transition chord to B flat seven to E flat major. Very simple modulation, but really effective. Modulation number seven is the chromatic mediant modulation. Mediants deal with either the three chord, which is called the mediant, or the six chord, which is called the submediant. These are both in major keys. In minor keys, they're the same thing. The mediant is the three chord and the submediant is the six chord. In a major key, both mediants are minor chords, and in a minor key, the mediants are both major chords. Now. The tricky thing about this is that you have to understand something called parallel major and minor. Parallel major minor all just means this. In C major, the parallel minor is C minor. In A minor, the parallel major is A major. It's just the reverse using the same tonic. If it's a major chord, it has a parallel minor. If it's a minor chord, it has a parallel major with the same tonic. So what you have to understand here is your three chord is E minor. That's your median chord. E major is the parallel major to that chord. E flat major is built from the parallel minor key because E flat is the third note or the median of the C minor scale. Okay, so off that we have E flat major and E flat minor that are built. Okay, so just remember you take the three chord, the median chord in a major key and you can make it a major chord instead of minor, and it becomes a chromatic median or a, or a three major chord. It, you can use a flat three major, or you can use a flat three minor, okay? Those flat threes come from the parallel minor key. Now with the submedian, it works the same way. A minor is the submedian in the key of C major. Its chromatic medians are A major, which is the built on the six, which is just the parallel major of A minor. And then you have the flat six major and flat six minor. Well, those actually come from here, okay? Because this comes from the six scale degree of a C minor scale, okay, which is A flat. So that's how those are related. They come, if you think about this, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's the sixth note in the scale. So you have to really know what notes are in these major and relative minor keys. So once again, the six chord, you can make the submediant a major chord. You can flat it and make it a major chord, or you can flat it and make it a minor chord. Now in A minor, which is the relative minor to C major, 
C major is the three chord or the median chord. F major is a submedian or the sixth chord. Works the same way. You can use C minor, okay, as your chromatic because it's just this, it's the parallel minor of C major. C sharp major is related to the parallel major chord, which is A major. It's built off the C sharp, which is the third note of the scale. So you've got your third and sixth note of the scale. That's where you're going to derive your, your chromatic medians here, the C sharp major and minor and the F sharp major and minor. Those are derived off the sixth scale degree of the parallel major. So really, you just have to memorize these, essentially. But these chords are your choices. You have six chromatic medians from C major, and you have six chromatic medians from A minor. And here's what they sound like. Okay, the chromatic medians in the key of C major are this. So remember, you have your median chord, which is E minor, and your submedian chord, which is A minor. So your three chord and six chord. So your first one is C major. So if I take C major and I go to E minor is your standard major to median. Then you go from the tonic to your first chromatic median, which is E major. And you can go from C major to E flat major cool sound. You get that common tone of G. C major, E flat major, or C major to E flat minor, C major, E flat minor. Great sound. Now remember that the E flat major and E flat minor are related to the parallel minor of C minor. So you always have to keep in mind that these chromatic medians are related to the major key, the, the tonic, or its parallel minor, or the relative minor and its parallel major. So in the key of A minor, you have your tonic chord of A minor and your median chord of C major. You have A minor and your first chromatic median, which is C minor. Really cool sound, right? Listen to it. A minor. C minor has a common tone of C. And then you can also go to your chromatic medians, which would be C sharp major and C sharp minor. So that would sound like this. This is A minor to C sharp major, which would be this. And then you've got A minor to C sharp minor. Great sound. A minor. C sharp minor. Now off your submedian, so you'd be going A minor to F major, so A minor to the submedian, which is F major. You can also go A minor to the parallel minor uh, chromatic submedian. You can go from A minor to F sharp major. Ooh, that's nice. Or a minor to F sharp minor. That has a common tone of A. So the thing you need to keep in mind with this is that you've got some notes that are common tones, you've got some that aren't, but you have to understand the concept of parallel major and parallel minor, and you basically have to memorize the little chart that I made first. Once you memorize that, it's going to give you a lot of options for where to go. This is a great device to use. And like I said, watch my episode on chromatic median chords. Okay, number eight, common tone or pivot note modulation. This can also include chromatic median chords. Anything that has a common tone between two keys, any common note that's between two keys can be enharmonic, doesn't matter, can be a, used as a common tone modulation. You can have E minor chord, so E, G, B, and this G could stay there. That's your common tone. This E could move to E flat. B could move to C. And this is a C minor chord. C minor, this is E minor. This is actually a median relationship. Okay, let me do a little bit more complicated example here using common tone or pivot note modulation. Let's say I have a chord like a F Lydian augmented, F major seven sharp five, F, A, C sharp, E, that's F major seven sharp five. It's actually also A major over F. Let's say I take the C sharp and I use an enharmonic tone with D flat major and I go D flat, 
G flat, A flat, that's D flat sus four, and then C. That equals D flat major seven sus four. Kind of a cool chord. Now, these chords are really not related. You can see you got G flat. If I look enharmonically, that's an F sharp, so that's a half step relationship. A flat is a half step away from there. C is a half step away from there. So it's completely unrelated, these two chord changes. And they sound like this. Okay, the first common tone modulation I said was to go from E minor to C minor. Our common tone is G. Ba I'll do it with a bass note. I did a different common tone modulation, I went to E flat major. The second one I did was F major 7 sharp 5 to D flat major 7 sus 4. Now, the D flat and C sharp are enharmonic, so I'm going to keep this C sharp here, and I'm going to put that F major 7 sharp 5 there, and I got it in the middle of the chord, and then I'm going to resolve to the D flat major 7 sus 4. Listen to that, it's a really cool sound. So. That's a really beautiful sound. Really modern. Common tone modulations can really be anything. I can do things with spread triads. Let's say I take the note F sharp here. I'm going to use some enharmonics. I'm going to go C Lydian triad to F sharp major triad in first inversion to D major, where it becomes a third, to E flat minor to E sus 2. So those are all chromatic common tone modulations. Okay, number nine is the direct or linear modulation when there's no direct connection between chords. There's no common chords between the keys. It could be really from C major to B major where there are no common chords there. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished. No chords are in common between the two keys. And that sounds like this. Okay, the direct modulation or linear modulation is just simply moving from two keys that have no chords in common. I did from C major to B major. Okay, so I could go from one chord in C major to G, one five, sharp major to B major. Obviously from C major to B major there are no common chords. I went from the five chord in one key, G major, to the five chord in, in B major, to the one chord. So that would be a direct or linear modulation. Number 10 in our modulation chart here is the chain modulation. This one is kind of similar to the circle of fifths or going around the cycle. Let's say you've got a uh, C major chord, then you change it to a C7, to F major, to F7, to B flat major. Okay, that's a chain modulation. So if you had a C major chord, to a C7, F major, F7, B flat major, B flat seven, E flat major. That would be a chain modulation. It's essentially going from a tonic, then flatting the seventh, making it a dominant chord, then resolving to its one chord and doing the same sequence over and over. That would be a chain modulation. Number 11 is the parallel modulation. We talked about this in the episode where I was going over the Thomas Newman Q uh, from Spectre called Donna Lucia, which is absolutely beautiful, which goes from E major straight to E minor. That is a parallel modulation. You can go from A minor to, to A major. It can go either way. It doesn't matter. Parallel means retaining the same tonic and just modulating to the parallel key. That would be something like this. E add nine to... 
E minor 9-11. You could go from A minor to A major. So I could do something like this. A minor. I'll throw in the flat six. So that would be a parallel modulation. Okay, modal modulations. I saved the best for last. I didn't include this on the original list, but I have an entire video dedicated to it that's way early on, I did it seven months ago or so, that you should check out. When you're taking a mode and you're modulating to another mode, if you move clockwise, you're moving in a sharp direction. If you move counterclockwise, you're moving in a flat direction. Sharp direction adds sharps, or if you're in the flat side, you're adding naturals. And a flat direction is losing sharps or adding flats. If I were to do a modal modulation, let's say I'm gonna go from the key of C to the key of G to the key of A. So I'm gonna be moving in a sharp direction. I'm gonna go three keys in a sharp direction. I'm gonna pick a mode from C. So I'm gonna go a D Dorian. Then I'm gonna to move to a mode from the key of G, which would be C Linian. Just making this up. And then a mode from the key of A major, which would be F sharp Aeolian. So this is one key in a sharp direction. This is two keys in a sharp direction. You can move in sharp and flat directions, but I'm gonna give you an example of what this sounds like. You could do something like this, D Dorian. To C Lydian. To F sharp. Once again, D Dorian, C Lydian, to F sharp, Aeolian. You can also move in a flat direction. Let's say we start in F major. I'll pick a mode from there. Let's say C mix Lydian. C mix, okay, which is F major. And then we're gonna go two keys in a flat direction to the key of E flat, and I'll pick a mode from there, which will be G Aeolian, okay? This is going in a flat direction, two keys. Okay, and let's say we go in another flat direction, two more keys. So we're in the key of E flat. Let's say we hop down to D flat major and let's give it uh, F Phrygian. Okay, so we've gone from F major to E flat major over to D flat major. Once again, this is two more keys, two keys in a flat direction. These have really great sounds. This is really advanced modal theory here. Sharp and flat direction modulations, okay? Let's take a listen to what these sound like. In the second example, going in a flat direction, I went from C mixolydian, G aeolian to F phrygian. C mixolydian. <laughs> two keys in a flat direction. Here's my C mixolydian sound. Then going to my G aeolian. Then to my F phrygian. So that's moving in a flat direction. It has a very different sound. The sharp direction modulations have a one kind of vibe. Once again, this is a Dorian. 
to see Lydia. To F sharp Aeolian. And then the flat direction ones. C mixolydian to G Aeolian to F Phrygian. So there's my complete list of the types of modulations I can think of. I probably left a couple out, but that right off the top of my head, I came up with 12. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, which has all these concepts in it, you can write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.